Hello, this is Jackie B. Peterson. I am the, your host today on Solo Pro Radio, and I am the author of Better, Smarter, Richer, Seven Business Principles for Solo and Encore and Creative Entrepreneurs, those of you in one-person businesses. And I'd like to share with you some information that I just learned. I was at a conference recently in Phoenix, and they shared with us a report called The New World of Work, and it seems that the statistics are in that fully one-third of the workforce today is people who are freelancers or solos, and it is expected by the year 2020 that 50% of the workforce is going to be solos. I think that's very exciting. I find this is a wonderful, wonderful way to be in business. And as you know, what we've done at Better, Smarter, Richer and on Solo Pro Radio is try to give you some resources solos to become more financially successful <laughs> and we've also tried to highlight some of the many, many different ways that people are operating solo businesses. It's a great time to be a solo, and obviously, this is what we're beginning to call the business model of the 21st century. So tune in and listen to uh, how people are running successful solo businesses, because we've got another one we're going to talk to today. Today, my guest is Ann Smith, and Ann is the owner of Life. Stories Remembered. Life Stories Remembered is a business that gives individuals the opportunity to preserve their memories and life stories in a variety of formats. Not only does Anne provide a much needed service welcomed by her clients, but she's also created an encore career for herself, which allows her to work the hours she wants and mostly from home. She's doing important work and doing it in a way that meets her own needs. I call that success. And I look forward to talking with Anne. Hello, Anne. Hi, Jackie. How are you today? I'm good. Very, very honored to be asked to be part of this. Well, I'm thrilled to get a chance to talk with you because I think what you're doing is so important. So why don't you start, you know, talking about your journey? You know, you had a long career before you began Life Stories Remembered. So why don't you tell some of our listeners some of the background um, you have and what kind of skills your education and work taught you that you're now putting together in your current business? Okay. Um, well, I, I, uh, I was a native of Manhattan. I, was, I got my undergraduate degree from the City College of the City University of New York, and then I lived in Washington, D.C. for 16 years and received a Master's of Education degree uh, uh, from the University of Maryland, and later on the Master of Social Work degree from the Catholic University of America. And uh, while in Washington, I wor worked in a school with children with uh, learning at learning and emotional problems, and then in a hospital setting with families of sick and dying newborns. And uh, this was all work that I was interested in, and I really felt that I was on a, a, good, a good path. Now, a personal note, because it all ties in together, I'm, I married and had a son who is now age 44, which is hard to believe. <laughs> um, and and after, uh, after I divorced and received my Master's of Social Work degree, I really saw that... Uh, a good vision of where I was headed in the Washington area. However, after a few years, I met a wonderful man who lived in northeast Pennsylvania in a community that was much, much smaller than any of the large cities I had lived in. But at that point in my life, I came to realize that, you know, it's not where you live, but who you live with. Yeah. And that's the, that's the dream to follow. So I left all my social and uh, uh, pr uh, professional supports in Washington and began the next chapter of my life. And once You're a real here, pioneer. <laughs> <laughs> once here, I worked, I worked at Jewish Family Service, and, and that gave me a different opportunity, a chance to hone my social work skills and to, to be part of a whole agency environment. Um, I chose to open, to open a private psychotherapy practice in 1995, and that was my first official solo business. Mm -hmm. But uh, I had the good fortune to have mentors who helped me set up the office procedures and documentation matters and get that business underway. So I really wasn't flying totally solo. Right, right. Uh, Actually, no oh, solo does. <laughs> that's <laughs> right. We, they, you know, you can't. You have to... You have so many other people you need. It's wonderful that you recognize that. So go ahead. Great. Tell us more of your story. 
Well, although I was not involved um, in uh, uh, religious life previously, my husband was, and that opened up other doors for me, interestingly. I became very active in our synagogue, and over time I um, had leadership positions as president of the synagogue and then chairman of the board, and that exposed me to the financial aspects of a large institution and how, how organizational management works on a scale that was much larger than anything I'd experienced before. So all of that was the backdrop to the yet next chapter of my life, which then set the stage for Life Stories Remembered. Do you want me to go That's on? Fantastic. I <laughs> love hearing that. I love hearing that. You know, one of the things, Anne, I've so enjoyed with talking with people is to hear how each uh, piece of their life unfolds into, a, you know, the next opportunity and the next journey. And, you know, when you turn around and you look back, you see I brought this from here, this from here, this from here. That experience yes. taught me this, and now I've pulled it all together. So keep talking about, you know, Life Stories Remembered. Well, Life Stories Remembered was an idea that I started thinking about in 2008, and I'll, I'll mm -hmm. tell you at some, a little later point about how that idea got started, and officially opened for business in 2008. So I started thinking about it in 2003 and officially opened for business in 2008. And um, starting that business required a very different skill set and knowledge base. And uh, for that, I freely consulted with others who were more experienced than than I. The Small Business Development Center, which is, is part of Wilkes University, which is one of the local, local mm -hmm. universities in our area, offered a seminar for people who were interested in starting a business, and I attended. And while much of the material did not apply to me, there was enough helpful information, so I began to really seriously consider doing it. And I was also looking to create a business which allowed me to work from home, and with Life Stories Remembered, except for the actual interview I do with clients, the rest of the work is done from my home office. And How as lovely. Well, mm -hmm. <laughs> How lovely. Yeah. So, um, you know, are you, are you finding Life Stories to be, you know, just very, very different from – you know, some of the larger organizations you worked with? Is it just a whole new paradigm for you to uh, be involved in your new, you know, solo business? It's, it is a whole new paradigm in a couple of ways. One is um, how do you handle the financial piece of it? And those are mm -hmm. some of the things I've learned from some of the other parts of my life. How do I um, shift from my uh, work as a, uh, as a psychotherapist to a business where I'm not doing psychotherapy and life stories remembered. I am just using some of those skills, but really listening and help people share their own stories. So there were a couple of very different things that, um, that I had to, to learn. I'll bet you have wonderful listening skills. <laughs> I try. <laughs> yeah, you know, and know how to... Um, hear beyond the words that somebody is saying to you, you know, maybe hear the emotion or the joy or the pain of something that they're telling you and, um, you know, when you interview them and I'll bet you can hear at a different level and that you are uh, really good at asking the right questions. You know, think of all that that you learned. I'll mm -hmm. bet you're good at that. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. I, you know, I, I, certainly, um, I certainly do my best and it is certainly interesting to um, to see as I'm interviewing people, it's almost like uh, almost like unpeeling a uh, an onion. They begin with um, being very hesitant, but mm -hmm. as the interview goes along, they obviously feel much uh, much more relaxed um, and begin to share share things in a much more open way. And so that's really kind of fun to be part of. Oh yes, yes. You know, um, so many people have. Uh, stories to tell and you know as they age nobody's interested you know right. and then and then particularly young people you know because they're so busy with their own lives and then they get into their 40s or 50s and they think oh man I you know I never asked grandpa or grandma you know about their life and they lived through this interesting time I would love to know that and um, you know it, it, it's lost quite often yes. 
That's exactly right. That's exactly what I uh, what I tell people and talk to people about, um, because that that is what I hear all the time. And when we are young, we we don't even think about asking questions <laughs> of our family no. members. And then no. later on, we're so busy with stuff. But by the time we are actually thinking about the value of it, very often it is too late. Yeah, yeah, that person's gone, and all that information went with them. And let's say we're lucky enough to run into somebody like you who is going to help them, you know, record it. I think that's fabulous. So let's get back into your business a little bit. Do you like being in business as a solo? I like it a lot, um, both in my private psychotherapy practice and in Life Stories Remembered. Uh, I like it because um, it certainly gives me freedom to be on my own. I've listened to several of the other interviews you've done, um, and and I can hear people all essentially saying the same thing, that it gives us a lot of freedom. However, mm-hmm. it can also be daunting because yes. um, it's, you're on your own. Yeah, there are, there are positives and negatives, but that's kind of true about everything in life. Yeah, yeah. What we're trying to um, teach people about being solopreneurs is that you build a, a network, a support ne- network, um, by uh, outsourcing a lot of the services that you need, mm-hmm. you know, maybe your website or your bookkeeping, your, uh, your assistant, you know, your virtual assistant, your uh, other colleagues if you've got a bigger job, uh, maybe in your case people who would transcribe what you do or, say, uh, put the uh, life story on a CD or uh, some kind of electronic medium, you know, something like that. You outsource to these people and you you build a uh, a network you know of people who actually work with you and they're you're their client and you know so you're not totally alone but you you know you build those networks so you know you don't um have to feel like there's nobody that you can ask and you have to do everything on your own uh, right because that really can be daunting yes uh, i think it also uh, pushes a lot of us towards um networking in ways that we might not have done before because sometimes you just simply need to get out of the house and go have a cup of coffee with somebody, Mm -hmm. Um, you know, to get beyond writer's block or uh, not wanting to pick up the phone and do the next marketing thing that needs to happen. And Mm -hmm. I think that's good for us too, you know, rather than just sitting alone. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. But what do you think is the most challenging part of being a, a solo business owner? I just want to go back to one thing that you had mentioned yeah. because I don't want, to, don't want to lose it. You had talked about outsourcing, um, mm-hmm. subcontracting. And it, in your book, you, you use the water, bur- water bug model, which I think yes. is really cool. And, um, and, and looking at the importance of my role versus the role of others who have more experience and talent in certain areas. And, um, and as a solo entrepreneur, quite frankly, it is easy to say, you know, oh, I could do that or I can learn how to do that. But um, if it requires going beyond our scale set and takes up more time than it should, that, that is the time to su- subcontract. And I learned that because there have been some things that I thought, oh, well, I can, I, I can figure that one out. Um, but it, uh, it's not a good way to run a business. So y- using the subcontractors is extremely helpful in many ways. I love that. I feel like saying amen, sister. <laughs> you know, and I come at it quite often from the the argument that how valuable your time is, and certainly in the work that you do, Life Stories Remembered, uh, you're speaking to a person's time, you know, what they did with their time and what they did with their lifetime. And I think to be struggling to do something in a – half-baked or not professional way because you're not good at it instead of saying, hey, I'm not good at that. Let me subcontract to somebody who's really good at it. You mm-hmm. know, I, I think there's a piece of professionalism there, and I think it's terrible to waste your time and your client's time that way. Right. You know, not, not giving them the best job because you insist on I have to do everything myself. Mm-hmm. That's, that's all true. But, you know, that's a learning process, too. Yes, that we have to go through as we're evolving. Yes, yes, mm-hmm. and I like that, that we're evolving. Mm-hmm. So do you, um, 